<laughs> and uh, this is uh, Monday, July the 25th, the time is 6.30 p.m. And this is the regular meeting of the Municipal Council of the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal for the month of July. And the meeting is being held uh, with all members of council uh, at their desk in the council chamber. And as well, uh, it is available by Zoom as well. And uh, just to the clerk, I don't, don't believe there's anyone on the Zoom connection. And so we have uh, the senior staff here as well. I won't introduce them at this point, uh, but I'll proceed to item number two on the agenda, which is approval of the agenda. <clears throat> and Deputy Mayor Deshaun, I think you have that motion. I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council approves the agenda as presented. Thank you very much. As presented, motion's on the table. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, and so that gets me to item number three on the agenda, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. If you have a disclosure, I have a, item, action item eight, A, application for severance on an order and petition and application. So it's agenda item eight, A, and uh, you're declaring a uh, this um, uh, a declaration of pecuniary interest, and have you filed the paper with the clerk? I have. Okay, and so are there any other declarations of pecuniary interest here this evening? None by me. None by me. Okay, so moving on then to item number four on the agenda. Item number four on the agenda is delegations <clears throat> and presentations. And we have one this evening, which is Mr. Mike Naughton talking about Spencerville drainage on Cedar Street. So Mr. McNaughton, welcome to the meeting. Welcome, by the way, to the other members uh, of the public that are here as well, it is Mr. and Mrs. Barner. And uh, so Mr. McNaughton. Hi, first time I've had a meeting, so thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, I apologize for uh, right now wearing my sunglasses, but uh, I haven't really proceeded out of them. And, even though I can hear your voices, we are all having a little earlier right now. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had your eyes dilated before, but uh, that's what I'm talking about. But anyway, apologies. Um, so yes, I'm here for um, for Cedar Street and um, with the drainage situation down there, I sent in some pictures, um, which there's a very large ditch that was uh, put in, in front of the house. Um, I, I have started, I talked with, um, Mr. Uh, Shaw, and he sent me to talk to uh, Garrett Hokey, um, which they said that they were going to um, come up with some ideas and get back to me. So I'm confident in that process. And also then I was talking to other councillors and they suggested that I come to council. Um, so I guess, really, I guess I'm at council just asking, you know, why that portion of the, of the world was missed or chose to do it down that way. Um, I think what you're talking about is the curves and gutters on the sides. And, yeah. and then I think if I recall from your briefing note here, from your correspondence, you would prefer to have the ditch covered in. Well, there's it's the only house in the village of Spencerville where the front of the house has a ditch. Every other house has, um, it's flat from the house to the road. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that's your major issue. Yeah. Uh, now I'll open just the floor just to see if there's anybody that has any questions about this issue. Um, and I'll get them to address the questions through myself and then to you. So we'll start with Councillor Cameron. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. McNaughton, thank you. Um, before this ditch was there, was, did your did the lawn go right to the road? It did. It was all covered in. I, I did not uh, put a previous picture, which I should have, but um, I can mm -hmm. arrange to make sure you guys have a picture. Like well, that, 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 to my satisfaction, your answer is, is fine. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, so it was right, the lawn was right to the stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Are there any other questions for Mr. McDonough? Uh, so maybe just uh, myself um, to the CAO and then redirect hopefully to the um, director of operations. So um, I'm assuming that this issue has been brought to the attention of staff, Mr. Grant. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it, it, it has been uh, the director of operations has been in contact with the uh, with the consultants and. Uh, Certainly, there is the option to extend that to the curb and gutter on the west side, approximately about one, one meter north of the entranceway, the driveway entranceway, uh, which would uh, allow runoff uh, to, to hit the curb, gutter, go down, go through that culvert, and make the effect in that portion of the, uh, would, be, would require a change order and some additional work. But with what you're suggesting there, there would still be a ditch at the end, at the at the upside of the culvert. There, there would be a uh, small, yeah, small portion that would, but the majority, the majority of that front would be covered. I'm, I'm wondering how that small portion would be cut with the lawnmower. Well, uh, Without having the the uh, redesign uh, in front uh, of us right now, I'm not sure. One of the, one of the items that we certainly don't want to do is have the water capture run uh, and, and the runoff go up the driveway. No, but if we're, I'm assuming that in order to make this work, we've got to do uh, curves and gutters on both sides of the street. Is is that that is not the adjustment at this stage. We're just looking at the west side. Curves and gutters? The curves and gutters. At the west side. The west side from Charles Street to just, just north of the, uh, of the entrance. Is there any reason we wouldn't take it past the culvert, the, the driveway entrance, the curve and the gutter? Well, and that, that would direct if the water into the ditch on the after it had passed the driveway entrance. And, and that, that has been mentioned to the consultants. They are recommending on the outside of that driveway. We will certainly be facing it. I guess my comment is that the, the consultants are not the guys that are going to have to cut the grass. Are there any other uh, questions for uh, Mr. McNaughton, Councillor Hunt? I have a question. Mr. McNaughton, uh, uh, I guess, to you who are our staff. Uh, my I don't see any way, way to really work top and before the driveway, and that's the that's the better fill the ditch all the way and have a catch basin there that it's going to run into a to a drain there there and under from the then down into the cul culvert. But I think it would get too economical to to put to the other side of the of the driveway. We see the point of stopping it on one side. It's going to cost us more more money. There's no doubt about it. I think it's uh, something we uh, maybe should have looked at it a little closer. I looked at the diagram. I'll take responsibility. I certainly didn't didn't see it. I assumed that it was uh, going to the other side side of it there. So uh, I think it should be. I really think personally it should just be. Run to the other side of the drive. You know, going to stop on the north side and take it to the third side of the drive. So that's just my opinion. Uh, Councillor Dilba. Uh, yeah, it's not to uh, Mr. McNaughton, but I, I, I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Hunter. But I, t I understood when we accepted this project, it was all the curve and gutter. I didn't expect, you know, like you said, you you, you thought, I, and I'm no expert in drainage. We passed a, a, a motion here to, to uh, have it all curves and gutters. Now, you know, it's going to be like that to us now, too. So, okay, so uh, we, we, we got to fix it for, for Cedar Street for sure. I think it's a 
Mr. Deporte for Deputy Mayor. Yeah, me to speak in as well. And and uh, until I read the package and saw the uh, the email, I I believe that uh, the entire area was uh, was curved in gutters. And you know, looking at the area pre uh, the work done, the lawns, you know, uh, flat right, pretty much right up to the road. You certainly could cut your grass right up right up to the road uh, without without any without any issue. So. Um, so uh, I'm just going to make a quick question to uh, Mr. McNaughton before I, before I let you go. Um, and I've got this second diagram that was, I think it's the second one. I don't know. Uh, can you see the? Uh, you, uh, you're having trouble with your eyes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Mrs. If you would. Uh, the, the question is this. Basically, um, this, does the roadway slope up to the garage or down to the garage? Oh, very, very slight. Up. Uh, so there's no danger of the water flowing upward. Okay, well, uh, we understand your, your issue, Mr. McNaughton. Uh, you made your point. I think the um, I think the members of the council have all kind of made their point as well. And uh, so generally what happens at this point is uh, uh, we leave this in the hands of the staff and uh, uh, staff will uh, come back with a recommendation. Now, I guess my concern is at what point do we deal with this? And I know Councillor Hunter is going to be dealing with this a little bit later on under uh, notices motion. So uh, I don't want to go any further here at this point. I think you've made your point and uh, your pictures speak for yourself, speak for themselves, if you know what I mean. And uh, I think we all understand the, the, the issue here. I mean, when we when we directed the um, engineer at a previous meeting that we wanted curves and gutters throughout, that was basically what we meant. So I, I found it a little bit disturbing when I saw your, your pictures and your issue there tonight. So like to thank you for coming. Did you have any other questions for us? Um, um, no, I just uh, wasn't sure of the protocol, and I'm glad I came. And thank you for uh, allowing me to time. Thanks very much. Right. Thanks, <clears throat> okay, so I think we'll uh, just yep. let that sit for now, and then you know that uh, when Councillor Hunter does his. Uh, um, Presentation at the end of the uh, item number, what is it? Item number, item number 13 on the agenda. Okay, so moving on now then to item number five on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of previous council meetings. And the first one is uh, the regular council of June the 27th, Councillor Hunter. This council received and approved the minutes of the regular council meeting dated June 27, 2022. Okay, this is the minutes of June the 27th. Are there any errors or omissions? Uh, hearing none, I'll deal with business arising later. Uh, so if there are no errors or omissions, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Um, just before I go on, just uh, I, I I see Mr. And Mrs. Bernard are here, and um, you you weren't listed on the agenda as a delegation, so I'm assuming that you're just listening. And then there's an opportunity at the end of the towards the end of the meeting for questions. That... We just got home from BI on Friday night, so we didn't know about that until last night. So. That's oh. why we didn't put anything in ahead. All right, that's fine. And so you will be allowed, there will be questions allowed at the end of the. Sure. Well, it comes at item number, where am I here? Oh, I was 15. So to the clerk. Oh, yes, item number 15 on the agenda. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to item number 5B on the agenda, which is the minutes of the tri uh, council meeting on June the 29th and Councillor Dillabo, I think you have both minutes. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that Ms. Valley Council receives and approves the minutes of such a tri county meeting dated June 29th, 2022. Thank you very much. 
Are there any errors or omissions here? Hearing none, I vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And I'm going now to 5C, which is a special council meeting of July the 18th, Councilor Dillabon. Moved by myself and seconded by Council 100, the next file of the Council of the and the next respective Council meeting dated July 18th, 2022. Thank you very much. Are there any errors or omissions here? Hearing none, I vote to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried. All right, now I'll deal with business arising from those minutes, those three sets of minutes. Does anyone have any business arising? Hearing none, I'm about to move on then to various committee meeting minutes. And these are the minutes of the five uh, committees meetings that were held during the month. And I'll start with the Public Library Board meeting of May the 31st, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Dillabar, that Municipal Council receives the minutes of the Public Library Board meeting dated May 31st, 2022. And Mr. Mayor, just before I hand you the resolution, I'd just like to confirm that uh, we had discussed uh, at the committee table a while ago about uh, some projects that the, uh, the library was doing. Number one was the, uh, the, uh, the locomotive. Uh, that uh, regularly uh, goes through Cardinal for uh, in, for ingredient, and the other project was uh, gazing at the stars um, with through uh, through Mr. Mallon from uh, from Johnstown, and I'd just like to confirm that uh, the train has been booked uh, for the children to clamor aboard, pull a whistle, and terrorize the engineer uh, um, for August the sixteenth. That is confirmed. And as we speak, uh, uh, CAO uh, Gladstone and Mr. Mallon are uh, setting up a stargazing uh, evening uh, and information uh, time um, sometime very shortly. So they're both confirmed. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. And I guess in response to that, I just want to say that not too many kids get a chance to climb on a a railway engine. So for sure, I'm sure I know that the first time that it was done, it was very successful, lots of response, and I'm sure this will be the same. So members, you have before you the minutes of the uh, public Cardinal, Edwardsburg Cardinal Public Library Board meeting of May the 31st. Are there any questions for Councillor Cameron or any issues coming forward from those minutes? Hearing none, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried, thank you. And so now I turn to the minutes of the court management committee held on June the 22nd. Councillor Hunter, I believe you have that one. I do. I'm going to shout out to my deputy mayor this afternoon. Council received the minutes of the court management committee day, meeting date June 22, 2022. Very good. Thank you very much. Now, are there any uh, questions here? None. I think these minutes have already been approved by the Port Management Committee themselves. They approved their own minutes. We just receive them. And so if there are no questions, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And then we go to item number 7C, which is the Committee of the Whole Community Development Committee meeting held on July the 4th, Deputy Mayor <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Council John Hunter. The municipal, municipal council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Community Development meeting dated July 4th, 2022. Thank you very much. Members, the minutes are before the chair. Are there any questions? Hearing none, vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And so the next one is item number 7D, which is the Committee of the Whole Meeting Administration and Finance Committee of July the 11th. Councillor Dillabaugh, I think you have that motion. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Council Hunter that this fellow council received and approved the minutes of the committee of the oral administration finance meeting dated July 11th, 2022. <clears throat> thank you very much. Questions, if any? Hearing none, I'll call the uh, question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. So now I'm at item number 7E, which is Committee of the Whole Public Works Environmental Services and Facilities meeting held on July the 18th. Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Dillabar, the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Public Works Environmental Services and Facilities meeting dated July 18th, 2022. Thank you very much. Questions, if any? Hearing none, vote to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Okay. So the chair notes that, and so the CAO. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I, I, normally, I normally wouldn't do that, but I'm just wondering if, uh, if the remaining members of the public have. Probably questions specific to central drainage, but just returning back to the same certification. Would we would we tell that and ask their questions? Oh, uh, I'm just, I'm just I'm, yes, thank you. a little bit of an order, and I, I meant to capture that. But yeah, All right. Uh, no. Uh, so your point is well taken. And, uh, and it's a, a definitely a courtesy that uh, is up to council to determine whether or not the council is prepared to extend that courtesy. So what we'll do, uh, Councillor Hunter has already stepped away from the table for item number 8A. So I'll deal with item number 8A and then I'll poll council to see if they're prepared to extend that courtesy to Mr. and Mrs. Barnard. I apologize. No, no, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good, uh, Interjection, we appreciate it. All right, so now we're on uh, the application perseverance at 1902 Crowder Road. And Councillor Cameron, I think you have that motion. I do, thank you. We are moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Dillabaugh. The Municipal Council recommend in favor of severance B, I'm sorry, B 84 22, bracketed 1902 Crowder Road slash Hunter out of brackets with the condition that the environmental impact assessment be submitted to the approval authority and to the satisfaction of the conservation authority as recommended by the committee of the whole community development. Okay, motion is on the floor. So are there is there any discussion here? Okay, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. So, uh, before I go on, uh, the CAO has raised a comment, and I'll deal with that. Uh, but also, before I deal with that, just to Mr. and Mrs. Barnard, your uh, first time I think that I've seen in the council chamber. So, I just want to mention that uh, what you're seeing here is actually council's formal approval of various recommendations that have come forward from committees during the month. So the council meets every Monday night as a whole in a committee format. And most of the issues, in fact, most of the issues that are here tonight are dealt with in detail at those meetings and this regular council meeting at the end of the month because the opportunity where the, the council formalizes the recommendations that come from committees. Committees do not make decisions, they make recommendations to council. All right, so having said that, the CAO has raised the issue uh, and, and the, um, the, the comment, uh, would, would council approve a uh, deviation from the printed agenda to give Mr. and Mrs. Barnard an opportunity to ask their questions at this point in the meeting, rather than have them wait through the rest of the agenda. So uh, can I have either a show of hands or a nodding of heads uh, to give us 
Okay, so I see that I have a good support from the council to deviate from the agenda. So it gives you an opportunity to ask your questions now. Mr. Varner. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I didn't know the procedure. What I really had to do when I was talking to the CEO today, and I guess I misunderstood whenever I had to put my name on the doc or whatever to speak. But anyway, you're, you know, you're here now. There's about 80 years here. How many have you been down there to see what you've done in the last three years? Well, I was, I can't say I was at your property, but I've been to the construction zone. You were down on my property, you see what I'm here. What else? There's like these different items that Gordon was down today and we talked about it. But, you know, and I talked to the engineer or the company or whatever it is. I mean, usually when you put a, a drainage system, you, you put the small tile at the start. All the tile they put in is the last one at my property. They're feeding it with a tile like this. And the last tile we pass my property is like this. You know, <laughs> totally wrong. I'm not an engineer, but I know better than that. And besides that, the ditch is here, and they were called repair. Not even the center of it. And the road is a 40 foot road allowance. I had to give you five feet off at once. And there's only a travel portion right now of maybe 10 feet. And there's another street that was a past me. It's not open, but it's not closed either. The Cherry Street's not open. It goes right down to Water Street. And the township is plowed down to me, down to my barn, and to my neighbor's property. In the winter time, and there's no way they're going to do that now, or the plow truck will be upside down the ditch. Oh, I'm guessing it's 12 feet wide and seven feet deep. It's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. Okay, okay so it's an opportunity for questions. I'm going to see if I can put a question here. So the question is, do, do we realize what the design is doing? It, it, and I, I mean, I guess maybe most of us sitting here at the table uh, are not aware of, I mean, I, I understand your point about the large pipe at the beginning and the small pipe at the end, but Councillor Hunter, are you at all familiar with it? Oh yeah, I did this here four times. Look at it. I thought the, the culprit he's talking about is a, a driveway that they put in, in where it's over shed. And I thought when they put it in first, that it was just a, a temporary, because they're still digging and working. I thought it was just a temporary culprit here that they set, set in there that they're putting in just in case you want it in. But it looks now that they packed it down and stuff, but it looks like that's a culprit they intend to, to leave there. there and they're not in the center of the ditch. No, but that's why I thought it was temporary. It was just kind of looked like it just kind of threw in and covered up that if he did work trailer was in there, if he wanted to get in and get the work trailer out, he could get it get it out. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, I I'm the thing that I know that engineers were trying to bring this in on budget one thing or another, but there's a limit to what you cut back on to be the budget thing thing here like the ditch way too uh, on down far farther once it was by his village property on the river. I, we understood that was going to be open, but I certainly didn't understand that it was going to be open all the way just the width of his driveway and that it's closed so, so, and from there down it's opened all, all, all the way. And he said, Word about so the trucks always turn and plow down there and then back up and plow, plow around. And like, there's no way it. Plow truck's going to turn down there, go down very far down that road, unless they've got an awful lot of widening out and filling in to do. Because I know it's maybe not finished yet, but it appears to me like where the grade is, they got set that that's the grade that they're planning on, on doing. The no, you're end. talking about the grade of the ditch or the grade of the road? The grade of the road and the ditch. So the road's built up some, some there, but the ditch is, I got it. The, where the culvert, the original culvert that comes across. Uh, that drained into that ditch, it's got to be what three feet below the bottom of that culvert to the bottom of the ditch. Like, if that's the grade to bring the ditch down, that water 
going across, it's going to take the take the side, other side of the ditch right out. Okay, so we have issues here. So, Mr. Barnard, uh, we don't we can't solve these issues. No, I can't the table. Um, and I appreciate you coming to ask the question because <coughs> now that you've raised the question, you know, we'll have to find a mechanism to deal with it. Uh, we don't deal with them here at the, at the council level, at the council table. Um, but um, the fact that you've raised the issue will um, will cause the staff to, uh, to, to, to bring that issue to the fore with the engineer. Um, I'm not an engineer, but I know we have a set of engineer drawings. And so I guess my first question um, to the CAO or through the CAO to the director of operations is, do we have uh, our engineer on site on a daily basis ensuring that this construction is being done in, in congruence with the engineer drawings? So Mr. CAO, to, through the CAO to, the, to Mr. Shaw, is our engineer on site on a daily basis to ensure congruence with the drawings? He's uh, through the CEO chair. He's on site most days. Most days. Well, is he aware of this issue that Mr. Garner has raised? Uh, through the chair, yes, I uh, spoke with him today. Um, he's supposed to come back in a couple of days with uh, some potential solutions. Okay, so. Oh, Mr. Barner, it appears that the issue has been um, taken up by staff and there is a discussion ongoing with the engineer. Uh, we don't know the result of those discussions at this point in time. But now I have two lots beside me that are tough to be dated, everything. All I got to do is put a sale sign on. They're covered, they're everything's done on. Are there entrance permits? One's got an entrance. Okay, one has an entrance. Okay, one doesn't. Okay, now are they uphill or downhill from where we're talking about? Downhill. Well, right in. <laughs> oh, they're in there. Yeah. Okay. So if I did sell one of them, or both, how would the road only 10 feet wide now? And it's a 40 foot road, and the ditch takes up 25 feet of it. Okay, and uh, what I'm not aware of is the width of the ditch. Is there something about the drainage that causes the ditch to be overly wide to accommodate the the, the, the angle of drainage? So, so to the CAO, I see the CAO is trying to jump in here. And, 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 and to understand the issue, we're attempting to get some of these answers and look at some solutions. We, we know what exists there now. We understand. From, from the presentation and from, from some of our observations, and that's not satisfactory. We're trying to look into looking at the reasonable solution that will, that will work. Um, one, one, one of the items that I do want to raise that, you know, in, in, in last, last year, we sent out a public meeting with, you know, with the drawings, Looking for feedback from from from, from residents on, on, on what was being proposed, we went through the, the entire process. Doesn't mean that it's perfect, but th things arise and we'll look for solutions. But it's not going to be within 24 hours. We're going to look, we're going to look and try and see what what can reasonably be accomplished, and work with the with the engineer, with the contractor, with you know, resident where, 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 where possible to, to, to find a reasonable solution. Right now, that's not the case. Right? Okay, uh, so basically the, the issue has been seized by staff. Correct. Staff is in communication yep. with the engineer. I've talked today and I've talked to Gordon. Okay. I mean, it's a lot easier to talk to Forrest Finn. You know, you don't complain <laughs> after. No, no, no. <laughs> you know. no, appreciate it. And we also appreciate the fact that you're away on holidays, too. And uh, so I want to thank you for coming today. And thank, thank you for my time. Sorry, I've got it. No, no. <laughs> we're having a different view today, but <laughs> I want to see that word. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, so now I'm on item number 8B, uh, which is concerning a telecommunications power, power at 
9066 County Road 44, Councillor Hunter. I believe you have that motion. I do. Move myself and by Deputy Mayor Dish, uh, and for Council One, accept the letter of undertaking from the Corridor Net Communications Incorporated regarding the telecommunication facility at 9066 County Road 44 and to request that Corridor Net Communications make provide the township with a copy of any comments or concerns raised during the public consultation period and three that provide no concerns are raised during the public consultation period. Council direct staff to provide a letter of concurrence to explore net communications in ink as recommended by the committee of the whole community development. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, discussion, if any? Hearing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried. And I'm now at 8C, Cardinal Dog Park, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Dillabar. Whereas the township residents have expressed an interest and there is an apparent need for a large and small fence area for the off leash controlled exercise of dogs in the village of Cardinal. And whereas the unused grass over area known as the second unused ball diamond between the existing tennis courts and the ball diamond nearest to the fire hall is well suited for the location of the dog park. As some fencing is already in place and the area is large enough to exercise both large and small dogs in separate enclosures if deemed necessary and whereas the proper signage in place, all dog controls, and cleanup will remain the responsibility of the dog owner and whereas it is proposed that the Colossus <clears throat> construct the necessary fencing and signage as well as some future repairs could be paid for from the Vigo St. Lawrence Hydro Fund which would eliminate any initial cost to the taxpayer and whereas access to water infrastructure is nearby if needed. Now and therefore be it resolved that Municipal Council direct staff to prepare plans, including construction details and associated costs for a modest off leash, leash, large and, I'm sorry, small and large dog park of similar size and layout to the one in Morrisburg, Ontario. <clears throat> and prepare a report for committee no later than September Committee of the whole administration and finance meeting. Okay, motions on the floor <clears throat> for discussion. Councillor Hunter. No, I'm not opposed to maybe having a dog park someplace in Cardinal, but I am opposed to being in this location because I really think this area here is required more for to be turned into a large parking area for the rink rather than a, a dog park. I think it's they need one in Cardinal. The council at A needs to find a, a different location for it other than there. And the fact we're using the uh, hydro money to pay for this, I'm, I'm opposed to that because I think we've got a major water and sewer project that's got to take place. Not well, it's going to take place because we've got rent money for it. It's budget now on number two highway, and I think it's going to take all that money along with whatever grant money we can have to try to alleviate as much cost as we can for the rates payers to try to pay for it. So I'll be voting against the motion. Are there speakers to the motion? I see, well, Councillor, he moved it, so I'll yeah. him, you, you should have spoken first, but uh, I'll let uh, Councillor Dillabaugh and then you go. No, I'm, I'm agreeable with Councillor Hunter. Um, that, that, that particular spot, uh, I, I understand you have a little bit of fencing, but uh, we need parking for the arena and for the pool, and that's prime parking what we'll lose. So I, I mean, I'm all for a dog park, not another. So I'll be voting against it. Deputy Mayor, uh, I'm spoken to this at committee. I'll speak to it again. I see, um, you know, the request is is for staff to prepare plans. Uh, again, doesn't say for parking in there, just for the park. 
Uh, my wish is that it comes back and it includes, um, you know, the concerns of both Councillor Dillabaugh and Councillor Hunter that, you know, the the plan would come back and show a need for uh, increased parking in that area and that with the creation of the dog park, it would include uh, that parking area. So I think both both things can be done with uh, with this plan. It's just a plan we're creating, not, not an actual dog park. So. Councillor Cameron. Uh, yes, uh, to, the, uh, to the issue of parking, uh, there's a considerable amount of parking that can be uh, can be utilized from the uh, parking area on the west side of uh, Dishaw Street down towards the fire hall. A lot of it is, is a grass area, which is not being used now, which could be turned into uh, angled parking coming off the street. There's also a piece of fencing uh, that runs between the road and the fenced ball diamond. There's another piece of fencing in there which could be removed and used uh, in the area where I'm suggesting the dog park go. So that could be utilized there. Plus, angled parking could could be uh, could be allowed from the fire hall north to almost the tennis courts, and you'd get a tremendous amount of cars parked in there. So I don't think. I don't think to turn a beautifully grassed area into a parking lot for a few months of the year when 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 uh, when primarily when tournaments are on um, is, is is a good use of, uh, of of township property. I think it would be more more beneficial to the to the residents that are asking for and want a dog dog park in that area to to be utilized uh, for that and. As for the Rito St. Lawrence dollars, uh, first of all, the Rito St. Lawrence uh, Hydro Fund was never set up for a project to be uh, such as the, uh, the County Road you know, uh, Water and Sewer Sewer issue. It was never set up for that in the first place, and, and, and there was no intention to, to do that. And for what it's going to cost to build the dog park, which is, I'm going to take a guesstimate here of somewhere in fifty to seventy thousand dollars for the for the price of that. Uh, uh, that uh, that uh, project, that's a drop in the bucket, Mr. Mayor. It's, it, I mean, it means nothing. Uh, so I, uh, I, I will be voting in favor of the, uh, of the motion. Okay, so I'm going to just, um, uh, looking at the motion that's before me, uh, I'm just going to look at the operative clause here because the rationale clauses provide some suggestions, but they're not actually part of the operative clause. Uh, and the operative clause is that municipal council directs staff to prepare plans, including construction details and associated costs, for a modest off-leash small and large dog park of similar size and layout to the one in Morrisburg, Ontario, and prepare a report for committee no later than, et cetera. So there's nothing in the operative clause that actually points to the location. The location is mentioned in the rationale as, as, as so I would take them as suggestions or rationale, but they don't reappear, the location does not reappear in the operative clause. So I think it's possible to pass the motion which would activate the operative clause, which is just directing staff to prepare plans, including construction details and associated costs, for a modest off-leash small and large dog park, similar in size, et cetera, et cetera. That's the extent of the operative clause. I think staff should have heard the comments about parking, and maybe there's some way parking can be brought into the plans that they prepare. And maybe they might suggest even a different location. So my first question to you, to Councillor Cameron, the mover, is this. Are you married to the location or the concept of a dog park? 
Um, I'm married to the concept of the dog park. The location um, has been uh, has been mentioned, um, and no other location has been has been brought forward. Uh, if there's another location that would be, we would certainly uh, certainly look at it. I would be, be totally opposed if it was suggested that the waterfront park be used as a dog park. I would be totally against that um, because number one, they're just not making any more waterfront park, and I think we should retain what, what we have. Uh, if there's if there's another location uh, within the confines of the village of Cardinal, uh, I would uh, be more than happy to hear it. All right, so there's some flexibility there. If, if I can speak speak to, to that, I mean, that's over, but I mean, for me, I'd prefer that we locked in that. Beg your pardon? I'd prefer that we locked in that location. Okay, but it's not in the operative clause at this point. So to lock in the location, it would need to be locked into the operative clause. And it's not there at this point. Then the whole, then the other issue that I've heard raised is the issue of financing, uh, which that issue of financing could be, uh, could be removed. I mean, that whole, uh, that whole rationale clause uh, could be removed because we're not at anywhere near a financing stage at this point. So to the mover and the seconder, would you have any objections since we don't have a plan in front of us at this point? Would you have any objections to removing uh, the one, two, three, to removing the four operative clause from the motion entirely? Mover in a second. That's Cameron and I can't see who the second is. Oh. So removing the whereas it is proposed. Yes. I mean, financing is something to be decided later. Well, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I mean, this is this is a, this is this this is locking in a way that the township can 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 receive a total a totally built. Uh, Dog park without any uh, without any you know, cost to the taxpayer whatsoever. Um, I, I I really don't see why removing that clause would it, would, would be of any assistance whatsoever. Okay, I'm just trying to find a way to get to the votes you need to pass the motion, but I think you have them, but I'm not sure yet. Well, uh, if I could, but you would not regard that as a friendly amendment. I uh, to be quite careful, no, I wouldn't, because the whole the whole idea here is that. Uh, that uh, uh, yeah, uh, th 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 this is the yeah. way that the township can, can receive an asset at, at no cost. I understand. I understand. At no direct cost of tax bill. You know. Okay. All right. So um, I still have the same motion in front of me as I had uh, when people began their discussions. So if, unless somebody else wants to speak twice, I think I'm about to call the question. Okay, I'm about to call a question. Those in favor? Okay, I have a report and vote requested by Councillor Hunter, COU. Okay, so I'm going to call the call, call vote. Councillor Cameron, how do you vote? Would be yay. And Councillor Dilba, how do you vote? Yay. Uh, Councillor Hunter, how do you vote? Yay. Deputy Mayor Deschamps, how do you vote? Yay. And say a vote's yay. So the motion is carried and it's four to one. All right, so just direct staff to prepare a report. Okay, uh, so that's item 8C. And now I'm at item 8B, which is reserve fund investing options. And Deputy Mayor Deschamps, I think you have that motion. I believe that's me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brandt. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. The Municipal Council directs the Treasurer to invest $2,500,000 into, into a one-year non-redeemable GIC with Scotia Bank at a rate of 4.4% or better, if available, as recommended by the Committee of the Whole, Administration of Finance. Very good. Motion is on the floor. And just before we call the motion, I'm going to just uh, through the CAO to the Treasurer, if I may, I'm wondering if there's been any update on rates. 
through the chair, yes, uh, I received an indicative rate for today of 4.56. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave the motion the way it is because it's 4.4 or better. Uh, but now we've received information that there is better available, and uh, and now and then, and that's for a non redeemable GIC one year. Correct. Okay. All right. So that's good information. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, are there any? Are there any? Is there any other discussion on this motion? Okay. I have Councillor Hunter. Uh -huh. Kind of assume the fact that in the next couple of weeks, uh, Bank of Canada is likely going to raise the rate of three again. How quickly we try to invest that money or are we going to wait a little bit to see what the rate changes in another week or so? Well, I think we just had a Bank of Canada meeting on uh, last week. Yeah, and so this, the next meeting is not till middle or end of August. Yeah, I'm, unless you want to defer it, but at this point, so we're pushing off the maturity date, we're pushing it off. And that's what so your your plan is to take advantage of what's on the table now. Correct. All right. Uh, um, so there are no other questions. I'm about to call a question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And uh, item number 8E, which is request for new street lights in the township on Charlotte Street, Councillor Dillawan. Thank you. Thank you for that motion. I'd like to make an amendment to that motion, please. Uh, we're investigating it. I'd like to make an amendment to put the street light. On poll number 61, if possible, um, with an investigation of our operation manager. The poll number is not in the yes, it is. Oh, I'm sorry, the seven should be like make a poll 61 after investigating makes it closer to Charlotte and 60. Okay, so your amendment then would change. Uh, from existing poll number 57 to existing poll number 61. So does, do you have a seconder for that amendment? I'll second you. Okay, Councilor Deputy Mayor Deschamps is seconding the amendment, which is just to change the poll number. I'm gonna call, unless there's discussion, I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna call, oh, okay, I see the CAO wants in here. Uh, so speaking just to the amendment, go ahead. Sure, Senator. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, the staff has been on site to look at, at that poll number 57 and 61. Um, so uh, definitely the better poll for that installation would be 57. It's a newer poll, it's a straight poll versus 61, which is a older poll, but it's quite a lean. I didn't think it was that much of a lean, but it's an older poll. I agree, and that's why I'm asking. Okay, the, the, one of the things that they, and I haven't seen poll, I've seen fit, poll 57, I don't know what poll 61 is. Um, one of the things that's pointed out to me uh, by my uh, contacts at Rigo St. Lawrence, although this is Ontario Hydro property, um, are these polls what they call primary poles with the main feed on them or are they secondary poles with the secondary feed on them? And uh, as you go down Charlotte Street, the ones on the left side of Charlotte Street as you're heading north are all primary poles with the main hydro line on them. And the ones on the right side of Charlotte Street are the secondary feed lines that, that take the, main, the power from the main line, bring it across and then distribute it to the to the housing. So which is poll number 61? I know it's a it's an older poll, but is it a primary poll or a secondary poll, or do we know? To the CEO to the chair, that would be a primary poll on the left hand side. 61 is? Yes. So does it have a transformer on it? It does not have a transformer. That's 61 you're talking about, correct. 
Okay, so, so, um, okay, counselor, go ahead, counselor. Yes, I'm, I'm just, does poll 61 through the chair to, to staff, uh, will it require the long arm that, uh, that is mentioned uh, in, the, uh, in the resolution? To put to, to the chair, uh, I, I would expect that they are the same distance away. Uh, through the CEO of the chair, um, they are probably about the same distance away. The only difference being that 61 is also much shorter. So it might be, uh, and, and it does have a, a tilt to it. So I'm uh, not sure how that would affect the beam of light from the public when it's directed to the road of the bridge. Okay, now, if I recall back to the committee meeting, you, the motion that was on the table at the committee meeting, if I recall correctly, was a poll number 67. 57. No, 67. And that was changed uh, at the committee meeting. Uh, has 67 been looked at? I think it was called A67. Uh, through the chair, um, all the polls were looked at. Uh, I can't. Recollect that one off the top of my head, but um, it was a shorter pole, so I believe an older pole and with wires running across. No, 67 was on the east side. That would be a very short pole. Yes, that's, well, that's shorter, a it's a secondary <clears throat> pole. Okay, so I don't know what to do here. I've got a, I've got a, a proposed amendment in front of me that's been moved and seconded, which changes the motion from pole 60. 57 to poll 61. I've got a comment from the CAO uh, that 61 is not, is a, I don't want to put words in your mouth, not a desirable. Is that a correct way of phrasing it? Uh, from, my, from my understanding, I would say that that's correct. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, Actually, I, I really don't know how to proceed here. Um, if I call the question on the amendment and the amendment passes, then we're going to a poll which is deemed by staff to be uh, not appropriate or, or not in the best, not likely to succeed, if I can put it that way. Not likely to succeed technically. Uh, okay, you want, it's your motion. So yes. you want it in again? I do. But with the help of the CEO and, and our operation manager, they feel 57 is better than 61. I will remove my amendment. Okay, so uh, now let me ask the seconder of the amendment, Deputy Mayor Desha. So the poll is the poll better, but the location is not as desirable. Yeah, the is not as good. 61, it is 57. Yeah, but the light is But it's still having light on charge. Deputy Mayor. There's another mechanism to get us out of this situation, and, and that is to, that is to, um, If the seconder, if the if the seconder is agreeing to remove the amendment, that can be gone, and then we can go back to the original motion, and you can deal with the original motion without putting a poll number in it and tying staff's hands in any way, and that way it would be, we would just be agreeing to the concept of a long arm street light someplace on Charlotte Street and technically it would be left to Ontario Hydro to determine which is the best poll to accomplish that objective. So if I could get the mover and the seconder to drop the amendment, I would then look for an amendment to the motion to remove any reference to any poll number. All right, uh, thanks for that option, the, but the, I mean, the reason that we wanted to put light or more street lights on Charlotte wasn't to worry about how great the poles were, but it was to worry about the dark areas that needed more light. 
That's correct. And in the darker areas that need more light, don't necessarily have the best bulbs. Uh, but going back to the committee meeting, 67 was, was a poll which was a secondary feed poll without a transformer uh, that was um, in, ref in proximity to three different uh, houses, in close proximity to three different houses. I'm talking to the safety issue now. I've got too many issues on the floor here right now, by the way. I need okay, to well, I'm happy to remove. I'm happy to remove the, the poll number. Okay, so I'm going to show. Or well, first my second, I guess, is what is what. Sorry, I'll remove my second. Okay, okay. so yeah. I'm going to show that the that the amendment is withdrawn by mover and seconder. Withdrawn by. I have the original motion. Okay. Yes, but staff needs. Um, staff needs the. Um, the notes for the sake of the minutes. So I'm showing that the amendment has been withdrawn by the mover in the second. All right, now I'm back to the original motion. And Deputy Mayor, you indicated that you were prepared to. No, no, I, I misspoke. I was willing to remove my second. No, okay. All right. So now I'm back to uh, is there a mechanism? to deal with this motion with no poll number and leave it up to the, um, the, the folks that are going to install the poll to determine uh, you know which which poll gives us best results from a, from a safety point of view in a dark neighborhood. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with with that wording. Um, I just don't want it to go on the best poll in the most lighted area. No. In the what? I just don't want it to go on the best poll in the most lighted area. There is no light at all there now. Well, I think there are some areas that have that have light even from other areas. There's, you know, the idea of 61 and 57 is that the, the darkest areas of the street. No, 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 there's, there's no light any there's no there's no artificial light at any point there. There isn't a single light along that, that, that entire street. Okay, the CAO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my suggestion would be if we're going to amend it, it's just uh, to erect one long arm street light on an existing pole that it costs not to exceed 3000 And that will allow our contractor to understand what we're trying to, to, to accomplish. It's the amount of money that we have to accomplish that. All right, so so what I need is, by the way, I, I need to have that original motion in front of me. It's been moved. It's over there. It's been moved. I didn't. Move. But no, it hasn't been. It hasn't been. You haven't put no. I didn't, you haven't been, I didn't exactly. call it. No. Well, it it's doesn't. Not on, it's not on the floor yet, and it doesn't. Oh, it's right. It isn't on the floor yet. Okay, so I need to get it on the floor to start. So it's moved by Councillor Dillavon. Okay, just give me a second here. Can't read the signature. You know who it is? All right, now I have the motion on the floor that Municipal Council, and I'm going to read the motion exactly as it's coming forward to me. That Municipal Council erect one long arm street light on the existing pole number 57 at a cost not to exceed 3000 on Charlotte Street in 2022 and direct staff to plan to install additional street lights in the 2023 budget as recommended by the Committee of the Whole Administration of Finance. Now, the, the CAO is suggesting that we just amend this motion on an existing pole. And that's the way it would read. A motion to remove the number 57. Okay. So I have, this is an amendment by Deputy Mayor Deschamps. Now, do you have a seconder for that concept? I'll second that. Councillor Dillabaugh seconding. Okay, on and existing. Old on an existing pole. 
All right, now I'm going to just deal with the amendment. Those in favor of the amendment? One, two, three, and myself is included and opposed, if any. Okay, so I, I declare the, the amendment carried. And so with the amendment carried, the motion now reads that municipal council erect one long arm street light on an existing pole at a cost not to exceed 3000 on Charlotte Street in 2022 and direct staff to plan to install additional street lights in the 2023 budget as recommended by Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance. I'm going to call a question on that motion. Go, 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 or do, you, do you want to speak to the motion? Speak to it. Okay. This is just opening council up again. Everybody wants a street light coming in and want and want the street light. Over four councils ago, we got rid of that, but we directed staff to other ex. The amount of street lights that the township could afford to do in the places that would most benefit for safety of our people in the town township, not just putting them up wherever somebody comes in and keeps wanting a street light. Well, that we start putting street lights up. I know it's going to pass because you guys are going to vote for it, but that's not the way street lights are supposed to be put up. You can't be running around putting street lights up in the street because there's four or five. Houses on it, and we can win the plane to start. I can take you to 15 hour streets in the township that are, that are dark, and we haven't put street lights up on them. The residents have put a street light up, a light up at their driveway, they want a light. You're just opening yourselves up to a lot of trouble. Further discussion, if any? Okay, I don't see any further discussion. I'm going to call the question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Uh, now to the clerk. So I don't know how you deal uh, in the minutes with the amendment that came forward before the motion was actually on floor. That was a mistake on my part. Uh, but the amendment was actually introduced before the motion was on the floor. Uh, so that's an error on the part of the chair, I recognize that. Uh, but if you would please include that as part of the minutes, because I think it was a, an interesting and a noteworthy discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, and so now I'm moving on to item number 8F. Uh, and item number eight F is the Spencerville Lagoon Sluice Gate Valve Replacement. Councillor Hunter. Mr. Michel, Secretary of Deputy Mayor Dishart, the Municipal Council Direct Staff terminate the Spencerville Splitterbox relining contract with Aqua Grain and Marina allocate $23,000 budget towards the Lagoon South Cell Sluice Gate Valve Replacement as recommended by the Committee of the Whole Public Works Environmental Services and Facilities. Okay, the discussion of any motions on the floor. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And now I'm on uh, 8G, which is the Armstrong Road Surface Remediation. Councillor Cameron, I believe you have that much. I do, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Gilmore. The Municipal Council direct staff to undertake option one, pulverize Armstrong Road surface back to gravel at an upset limit of $17,100 and fund the work through the Public Works Reserve as recommended by the Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities. Very good. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Discussion with any. So, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, a, a couple um, uh, to the C to the CAO. Um, I, I can't help but feel like like we're headed headed backwards with doing this. I mean, at the beginning uh, of of our council terms, um, I think one of the 
things that the council wanted was certainly to pave more roads and have more roads that were or at least less gravel. Um, I get that there's you know issues with with this road that have to be dealt with, but I I struggle to think that this is the only solution. So um, it was mentioned at committee that there were five other roads that were surface treated at the same time. Um, and that this road has uh, issues with um, poor subsurface and, and poor drainage and that, that those, you know, those had to be rectified for, for it to last longer. But it was also mentioned that the lifespan of, of the road is five to seven years. Um, I don't recall, and, and I looked on the website and looked through any of the things I could find on the website. Um, I don't recall seeing anything about replacing those other four roads over the next two years or receiving a report that said anything about their existence. So um, are we going to see this again, possibly this year, if residents complain about the potholes on the road? Are we going to be going backwards and turning roads that are paved back into gravel? Well, first of all, we're not just, just a correction in the wording. So we're not certain. So yeah, it's not roads that are paved, roads that are surface treated. Yeah. So through, through, through the mayor, uh, we did do uh, five roads. Typically, at a five to seven year, sometimes you can get eight, depending on traffic and a number of conditions. And then typically, there would be a single surface uh, layer uh, added on to that particular road. Um, the, the, re the, the reality of, of the Armstrong Road is that it, it's too far gone. You can take the loss with respect to turning it back to gravel. And then I anticipate that it will have to be revisited with uh, some improvements with respect to that uh, base and drainage before uh, looking at putting that back on as a, uh, as a potential uh, candidate. Not, uh, not, 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 not happy with the uh, uh, result uh, from, from, from a staff perspective and, and a number of other ones, but um, not the only, it's not the only option, but it's certainly the most viable option given that we already have the budget approved for uh, this year. And when we're looking at, you know, the amount of time that staff's going to have to spend in the remaining uh, coming season filling in potholes on a regular basis, it's not very efficient either. So just just to follow up. Follow up. So um, I mean obviously at the at the time it was paved. Resident, surface treated surface treated, sorry. I keep saying paved, my my bad. Um, at, at the time it was surface treated, obviously there was a reason that it went from gravel to surface treated. Um, uh, now we're going back to surf or to to gravel, um, and and we certainly haven't seen a long term plan. Uh, you know, can we expect to see to see one? And um, you know, the what were the original considerations then like to 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 make this one surface stream like? Those, if, if the existing or if the conditions haven't changed over those those five years, we haven't been presented with any any plan to change the conditions. If it hasn't worked out. What are we going to look at? I guess, I, I guess to the mayor, I think that that's an incorrect statement with respect to any kind of five year plan with respect to uh, projects uh, coming forth. We, we, we certainly have presented um, in, in, all, in, in, in all fairness, uh, each year through the budget process, a number of these roads get cut. So um, I don't think it's really um, um, at this particular stage of, of, of the uh, of the year that it's a long lengthy debate. Uh, we provided some options. One of those options is to do nothing, but you're just going to continue to, to, to do re repeat the same thing. We feel that option one is the best. We recognize that in that particular road, we're going backwards. I, 
I'm like, I'm not sure what, I'm not, uh, in, in all fairness, I'm not sure what else to say. Okay, maybe, to say, maybe, but, you know, maybe I can help a bit here. Uh, uh, and, and I guess I'm going to try, I, I mean, well, let me go back to basics here. <laughs> We all understand uh, as a result of our experience that when we spend money on roads where the base has not been properly um, identified and, and rejuvenated and the ditching has not been properly done, that we're risking the, the, the result. We're risking the result. So we do have a five-year roads plan and a 10-year roads plan. I don't know when, when the last time that it was updated, uh, but I know that at least, I'm sure that it was updated during this term of council where we saw what our five-year plan was and what our 10-year plan was. And then we saw those roads, I think if I recall correctly, we saw them by name. Uh, what I'm not sure is uh, whether that plan has been up to date. And the second thing is, I don't know, and maybe we can get some uh, some feedback on this. Are are we taking that five year plan and that ten year plan and using our existing equipment and our existing manpower to prepare road base problems and ditching problems in anticipation that we will eventually turn these gravel surface roads uh, into uh, either surface treatment or paving. So two questions there. Uh, first of all, has our five or 10 year uh, plan been recently updated? And I know that it's not fair to ask you that question here, but could we have that, um, could we have that answered at the next meeting, next committee meeting? And then secondly, are we using our existing forces uh, to prep roads sequentially in anticipation of a, of a program which will see surface gravel surface roads uh, brought up to a different standard. So, and the reason I'm asking it that way is because the, the nub of the question is where will Armstrong Road fit back into that plan? That's the issue, I think. That I, I'm not trying to. No, that's exactly where I Thanks for getting there. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it, it, it would be fair to say that we, we haven't slotted it back in yet. This has been... Uh, uh, no, of course not, because, right? yeah. It, 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 it's relatively recent, but if, if you do recall, that, uh, we are completing sort of the um, study of, of our gravel roads, with an upcoming five-year plan based on the assessments of what needs to be done. And that was uh, awarded, um, I'm going to say maybe four or five months ago. And then this is an update of the five-year so, uh, I'm anticipating that that report will be coming in the next month or so with those results. So um, that was all surrounding the uh, major um, Options of one to two graders, and, and part of that process was to, to, to get that five year plan uh, developed. So that, that work has been uh, done. They did do some assessments in the springtime when conditions were uh, what we would consider worst case scenario to help a better uh, uh, plan ahead. So that, that, is, that, that is in the works. Um, I get the disappointment. I'm a little frustrated because uh, I was one of the major recommendations to do uh, Armstrong Road. So uh, I've got some egg in my face. But not the first time I tell you. I mean, let's face it, there's an awful lot to do when you do surface treating. There's an awful lot uh, to be said for the contractor, the contractor's diligence, uh, the weather, and a number of other factors. But go ahead. So uh, one of the things. Uh, from committee that, that or one of the questions that came up was uh, what exactly was happening to the surface treatment product it was going to be pulverized and there was um, a lack of understanding I think around the table of exactly what was being left on the road whether it was just going to be gravel or new gravel or whether they were leaving behind the old uh, existing surface treatment 
after it was pulverized. After it was pulverized, yeah. So there was a question with that, um, just if there's an answer to that before we. Certainly, typically the, the, the pulverization, they, they, they typically pul pulverize down to as close to the, the size of uh, gravel as possible. And then typically it's mixed in a little bit in the fine uh, uh, gravel layer. Uh, we'll over top to smooth that off. On, on the yeah, but it doesn't belong to the contractor in full weight. No, like typ 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 typically. Uh, that was the um, word. Yeah, that's I the think word. What, I, I think what I mean, there might be some whatever. Like in, in a milling operation, you have, have those fines that you may pull away to be used someplace else at another time. Pulverization is basically you're pulverizing it in place. Right. You're using it as part of, to, to 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 help with the uh, with the existing base. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Any okay. other questions with regard to this point? Hearing none, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. All right. Now I'm going to a H, which is Cedar Grove Road Circus Remediation. Councillor Hunter. Mayor Dishaw, second by Deputy Mayor Dishaw, the Municipal Council Direct Staff to undertake option one, pad and cave improvements to the street of the Cedar Grove Road starting at the boundary of Augusta Township heading east towards Fraser Road to an upset limit of $70,000 as recommended by the Committee of the Whole Public Works Environmental Services and Facilities. Thank you very much. Discussion with any? Just a quick one. Okay, go ahead. You, sir. Uh, we had a pretty solid discussion, I think, a committee about this one as well. Um, starting at the Augusta border, I think that's you know definitely the worst or is close to the worst section. Um, we, I think, at least for me anyways, I struggle to understand. I know we're getting $70,000 worth, um, but I struggle to wonder if that's, you know, uh, 20 feet or 500 meters. Um, I'd feel far more comfortable if I knew exactly how far $70,000 dollars was going to go uh and uh you know i think it was said again that this solution's possibly like a five to seven year solution um so two questions i guess one is can we get a better idea of how far the seventy thousand dollars is going to go and the second question would be um when cedar grove is being redone or when when it's you know being uh, totally reworked would this padded and paved section be part of a reworking or or would it wait again to the end of the lifespan of what was being done before it got reworked? Uh, through, through, through the mayor, um, Cedar Grove Road is a fairly long section. Um, with probably several sections within there that would, be, would need to be I, I can't recall off the top of the name of the director of operations and not off of there on, on uh, the, the, the exact section. I, I, I want to think that it may have been uh, in or around that Fraser Road that was uh, considered as a, as a section to be uh, uh, with, with that full re reconstruction first, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. But uh, what would what would be appear to be is the worst section is uh, right up against that Augusta Township border. Um, I get that. I, I I would love to tell you in a in a, you know in a way exactly how far that 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 would go. It's it's a little it's a little hard because it's going to be based on the the, the, the personal use and and the depth of all those uh, areas that need to be filled. Uh, but we'll, uh, certainly will be more than than twenty feet. Um, you know, uh, hopefully it will will cover a, a good portion of the section. But I don't know until we get we get it on. I see the sure. to the CEO, the chair, the deputy mayor. Um, just a little. As you said, you don't know the depth of the lots of stuff in the wheels and whatever else there is there. But just a, I guess some perspective is that Spencerville will be looking at around 550 tons of asphalt. And if we can get it for 140 a ton, if we can, we, we've been given a wide range on that. So we're not sure what that would come in at. But at 140, 
dollars per ton, we would get uh, about 500 tons. So okay. th that's, I, I can't really say that, you know, the first 20 feet will be, you know, six inches of asphalt to, to get the pad down or, or maybe two inches, sorry to say, in the round. That helps though. Did, did you want in right? Well, yeah. So and then I'm going to pass the bill. I drove with Frank two or three times in the last couple of, uh, couple of days there to look at it. I don't think we're going to get it for $140 a ton, but I think we'll get it for around $160 or $165 range, range in there. Uh, and I guess we should get close to a kilometer. Um, in my best guess, I'm driving. So, a few that but there's stretches in there that's not that bad at all because it's a lot of it's not going to take that much and you know it worked out yeah it one set little top there yeah, yeah. the yeah. wrong way so. but one kilometer uh from augusta that's boundary one point. kilometer doesn't take you to fraser road no no but it's not great so you're going to get that that jar that when you come off that fresh pavement of augusta that you hit those three or four Ruts there, yeah, and it gives the plow guys a chance when they come off that on some screws, a yeah, a chance to get slowed down and get going. It was bad last year there, uh, down a few times there, and the plow really just jumping when they come off that nice move for the first 60 yards or so. Some days it's pretty rough there, so well, speed of the plow is an issue with me because that's why we have so much gravel in our ditches. Anyway, I've got a motion in front of me here. Are there any further discussion, yeah. Councillor Dillon? Um, I guess for my own, what's pad? I say pad and pave. I know the pave. What's pad? Like what? It's give me an example. Pad is just a building. Okay. Just pad. You're padding that surface, so it's a little smoother. But we're going to do the whole. We're not. We're not patching like cold patch. We're going to. You're not cold patch. No, we're going to put it right. It's going to be all even, right? But I don't have any concerns. Okay. Okay, I'm about to call the question here. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, now I'm at item 8i, which is suspensable Legion Beer Garden Request. Councillor Dillabaugh, and uh, what I have in front of me is the letter uh, from the Spencerville Legion and a briefing note, and I don't have the actual motion in front of me, so uh, Councillor Dillabaugh, you'll have to read the motion, and then I'd like to get it right away. Moved by myself, so second by Council Hunter, that the municipality council supports the Spencerville Legion. Request to host an outdoor beer garden on August 27th, 2022, for the baseball gym. Okay, the motion is in from the recommendation and the briefing note. All right. So, uh, discussion, if any. Hearing none, we'll call it. Those in, those in favor? Aye. So motion is carried. Right. And I have the same thing, I think, with item number. 8J and 8J is uh, the Clement Control and OPG lands, Deputy Mayor Deshaun. We have that one. And Thank again, you. motion, I guess, is in the form of the recommendation that's on the briefing. Yeah. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councilor John Hunter, the Municipal Council enter into the license agreement, license license amending agreement what? with Ontario Power Generation for the purposes of Clement Control and lands owned by Ontario Power Generation. With, and I think that, that entire agreement was circulated. So, about to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Motion is carried. All right. Hang on just one second here. So now I'm at item number nine, which is the count correspondence packages and Councillor Cameron. I think you have that much. Yes, uh, I do. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Cameron. 
that municipal council receives the correspondence listing for the following dates as previously circulated. June 29th, 2022, July 7th, 2022, July 13th, 2022, July 20th, 2022. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And then the municipal disbursements. And uh, Councillor Dillabot, if you have that motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Council Cameron that this time the Council approves the payments of this county. Yeah. And it's just circulated and dated as follows. Reported date June 28, 2022, dash 89,643,103.20. Reported date June 29, 2022, dash 90. $55,334.89. Reported dated July 15th, 2022-93, three hundred sixteen thousand five hundred fourteen dollars and ten cents. Reported date July 20th, 2022-95, $187,585.97. Reported date July 21st, 2022 Dash ninety seven, two hundred and three thousand two hundred and eighty dollars and five cents. A total of two million four hundred and five thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars and twenty one cents. Okay, so thank you very much. Discussion with Penny. Hearing none, we'd like to call the question. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Go ahead. But I, I do have a question on the it's really not on the amount of the disbursement. So I, it's on page uh, 88 of 129, and it's the uh, electronic transfer. It's under Jeff Hopkins. Um, I see we're issuing a check for a, for a payment to him for almost $1,500 for pool chemicals. Just like to know why we're doing it. So, from the chair of the CAO to the treasurer, I guess. Uh, I'll divert the uh, the answer to the uh, facilities manager because he would be more able to answer. Certainly, I'll see the mayor to the counselor uh, Cameron. Um, we purchased a large quantity of uh, chlorine flux uh, from Costco um, when we first originally ordered our flux from the local hardware store. There was an uncertainty whether or not they would be able to obtain the amount that we were looking for. Um, so we went ahead and bought, bought a, a bulk purchase from Costco uh, at a savings of $35 per fail as opposed to what we would pay for at the hardware store. And I assume that, that we did it with a credit card, a personal credit card. And then here that is the correct. Yes. Yes. That, 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 uh, thank, that, that, uh, that explanation is, uh, it was suffice for me. Thank you, Mr. Francis, for the help. Okay, are there any other questions for the disbursement chief? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Uh, aye. Motion is carried. All right, now I'm in bylaws and bylaw. 11A is the procedural bylaw, and uh, Councillor Dillabon, if you could have that motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Councillor uh, Karen that the move would be granted leave to introduce the bylaw to amend bylaw 2019 16 and being a bylaw of the governor and the proceedings of council and committee of council. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay, again, this uh, changes to the procedural bylaw, well discussed at the committee meeting, calling the question on first and second reading. Those in favor? And that has unanimous approval. You can proceed to third reading. Thank you. All in your third reading on this one? No. Okay. And uh, so then, that's item number 11B, which is a borrowing bylaw, Councillor Hunter. 
Give my shop second by Deputy Mayor Dishon. It's moved to grant thee to introduce a bylaw to authorize certain new capital grades works of the township grids for Cardinal and to authorize the commission of an application of Ontario Infrastructure and Land Corporation for financing of such new capital works and to authorize temporary borrowing from OILC to meet expenditures in connection with all such capital works. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Thank you very much. Discussion and Benny. Okay, hearing none. Those in favor? All right. All right. So that's unanimous. Did we get a third reading on this one? Yeah. Move my shelf taken by Deputy Mayor Addition on the bylaw to introduce a bylaw to authorize certain new capital drainage works for the township grants of Bird Cardinal to authorize the submission of an application of Ontario Infrastructure and Land Corporation for financing of such new capital works and to authorize temporary borrowing from OILC to meet expenditures in connection with all such capital works. We now read a third time and finally passed signed sealed number 2022-49. Okay, uh, third reading, those in favor? Motion is carried, thank you. And now I'm proceeding to 11C, which is the Greenfield Global Water Agreement. And that one is Councillor Kemp. Thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Tucker, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute an amending agreement to the design, building, finance, operate, and Maintain agreement with Greenfield Global Inc. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay, Green. Uh, first and second reading discussion, if any. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. It's carried unanimously. You can proceed to third reading. Thank you. Once again, it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute an amending agreement to the design, building, finance, operate, and maintain agreement with Greenfield Global Inc. We now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and number 2022-50. Thank you very much. And those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Now I'm at item number 11D, which is the Cormorant Control on OPG Lands Agreement. And Deputy Mayor, I think you have that one. I do. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to enter to, into a licensing amendment, amending agreement with Ontario Power Generation. And this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. Thank you very much. First and second reading. Those in favor? Aye. Most is carried unanimously. Proceed to third reading. Moved by myself, second by Councillor John Hunter, that a bylaw to introduce a bylaw to enter into a license amending agreement with Ontario Power Generation be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, number 2022 51. Good, thank you very much. Rolls in favor? Is carried. Thank you. Right now, I'm at item number 12 on the agenda, which is the CAO's administrative update. And um, I'm going to have the CAO present his report. Then we'll have the questions. And then I'll ask uh, Councillor Hunter to bring the motion forward at the conclusion of the question period. So, Mr. CAO, if you'd like to highlight the report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This first off, I'm going to thank the treasurer for filling in uh, last week for me during my uh, my uh, absence, a little vacation time. Yeah. And uh, the rest of the senior staff and putting this together. So uh, with respect to uh, economic development, just wanted to uh, remind uh, or mention the council that the regional tourism destination strategy is now available on the county's uh, website for viewing. Um, with respect to our zoning uh, bylaw, our zoning bylaw, we have received an appeal. Uh, we have touched base with uh, with uh, legal and planners, and uh, are preparing a submission uh, package. 
hopes to uh, reduce that scope just specific to the portion that was appealed, uh, allowing the uh, the remainder of the bylaw to be become a full uh, full force and effect. Uh, unfortunately, with the uh, Ontario Trillium uh, Foundation uh, application, we received word uh, last week that uh, they were really not successful. And uh, it appears that the main uh, reason was the, uh, the alignment with the uh, funding outcomes. Under uh, building, uh, you know, uh, the Approximately 100 the building permits issued to date, and therefore, over the last the couple of months, uh, the uh, CBO and building inspector have been uh, cleaning up some of the uh, outstanding and inactive uh, uh, building permits uh, over the last few years. Um, upcoming meetings just a reminder of uh, July 28th, this is the Tri Council uh, meeting, and that the uh, committee of the whole community development. Will be on Tuesday, August second, Monday the civic holiday, and we may be required to adjust uh, the uh, meeting schedule with respect to the uh, public works and environmental services facilities and regular council, as uh, that that may uh, interfere with the annual uh, conference. Under Treasury. Uh, everybody's favorite time, the final tax bills for so heading the first week of August, and we do the, uh, the, the end of August. A pretty positive note with respect to the food cycler uh, pilot program. The 12 week uh, pilot program is completed. Online survey has come out, and uh, we have, uh, at least as of uh, July 20th, uh, 70 responses back uh, from those. Uh, Surveys, so we will prepare a report to, to the council in the upcoming uh, months uh, with respect to the, uh, to the project and recommend the next step. Under uh, facilities and recreation, the first uh, session of the year has been uh, completed, and uh, we, uh, we have 42 uh, children attend the uh, Mount Cascade uh, uh, bus trip. Giant Tiger donation with respect to the new lane ropes uh, that uh, were donated uh, by Giant Tiger in partnership with uh, Sarah. Uh, they had their inaugural uh, use in the uh, Cardinal Swim Meet uh, uh, last uh, Saturday. Um, with respect to uh, the healing uh, place, uh, recreation staff have met with South Nation Conservation to, uh, to get a better understanding of the scope of work and uh, have made sort of the first cut. And uh, uh, likely for the remainder of the season, we'll, we'll be doing the cutting on a bi weekly basis. Um, operations uh, Public Works. Uh, so we've uh, we've uh, received some uh, what we would call low concentration uh, calcium chloride uh, from uh, Denkem at, at, at no cost. So we'll we'll be topping up some of those uh, uh, gravel roads uh, as a as, as an area of best suppressing. With respect to the Johnstown drainage uh, project, has been delayed uh, uh, a few weeks. Likely a month as they uh, work away at the uh, uh, suspension of drainage uh, project. Uh, with respect to the County Road 2 project, uh, geotechnical work is uh, is getting uh, all, the, all the preparations are getting ready for that to uh, take place in August. Your page three environmental services, as you know, uh, with the water treatment plant. Uh, we had an adverse uh, sodium result, uh, so that was reported to the uh, spills action, uh, NDCP uh, health unit, and the, the protocol is to take a resample. Resample was below the regulatory uh, limits, no, no further action required. Uh, similar, uh, during the sampling, we had a lead uh, sample uh, result. Uh, same process uh, followed. The resample was below regulatory limits and no uh, no further action uh, required at this time. 
uh, under uh, operation with respect to municipal drains. The uh, Ferguson drain uh, tender is out and uh, with the closing date of uh, August uh, 16th. And uh, in speaking with Robinson Consultants, they should have the tender package uh, ready for the Newport County Road 2 uh, by the end of this week. Under fire department, uh, the fire department has participated in the uh, summer reading program at the Cardinal Library on July 14th and uh, scheduled to do the same at the Central Library on, uh, on August 14th. Those are some of the uh, some, some of the highlights of the report. Okay, so questions for Mr. Grant, and, and uh, okay, I'll just take your hands, Deputy Mayor. Um, just or two, if I may. Uh, one regarding the uh, zoning bylaw uh, appeal. Uh, I think you sort of you sort of answered it. Um, we're first. Seating, we're asking if the rest of it can be approved except for the quarry portion or the appeal portion. Um, and and what what is that? What is, exactly does it mean to us? Uh, how do we prepare? First, of all. Um, so still 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 working out all those uh, all those details at this time. Uh, but uh, that is the high level plan is to uh, is to is to, to, to go in that direction. Well, um, not regarding that question, that, that one's fine. I did have one more question. Go ahead. Um, so with the the, um, the uh, Ontario Trillium Fund uh, uh, grant application, um, reading what what you know what what was sent from them, um, will there be or is there a way that we can get more information so that we understand? Exactly where where we went. I don't want to say where we went wrong, but why we didn't qualify, um, so that we make sure that we write grants so that we will qualify in the future. Uh, through the uh, through the single mayor, I, I I believe there is a mechanism to to uh, do the relief with respect to it. It's it's been that we will uh, we, we we will look to uh, uh, to schedule something dated around the end of the year. Um, where some of the weaknesses were and where uh, where we can strengthen. Thank you. There's some more other questions to the CAO. Councilor Hunter. Yeah, and uh, maybe for you, the, the facility manager here, I see that our first one for ingredient ice is going to be August 8th or 8th. I'm just wondering, I assume we're going to start around the 1st or 2nd August ice and down there, like, like the, uh, how is our booking going? Are we pretty well booked up for that uh, fall ice? Or? Um, through church, through uh, Council Hunter, we're about 75% budget right now for based on the 2021 numbers, one of ours. So, oh, yeah, uh, are that, uh, are we, are we, is there going to be a, any, uh, Walk on ice uh, available for early. I assume most of our rentals are likely going to start around six o'clock or following us for some of the breaks. And bring the chair to the uh, house center. So the first week, the week of the week, um, the rentals are during the day. There's an actual uh, shift and eight o'clock in the morning, they're going to get all the rentals on until eight o'clock in the week. So from eight o'clock on, a couple of weeks. That week there are some walk on opportunities. The following week there are walk on opportunities during the day. The evenings are primarily like the and the weekends as well. What's the rate going to be for the walk on? The walk on rate is if they're not booking, it's the same as the day as it is in the past. Just one I know there is. Some granddaughter worked on his partner on the other partners in Houston. They can't afford to rent a full hour of ice, but if there's like a walk on time available, they can come and practice on it. But like I said in the past, just so that it doesn't upset somebody, the, the walk on is only if the ice is available and only if there are 
or stop or doing something on things like that. Yeah, you know, uh, just good. sometimes people show up and say, oh, geez, I expected to be able to go up there. Now I can't because you're doing race maintenance. Yeah. You want to rent the ice and pay the full pop? Well, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, they're working in the yard. Well, I wasn't referring to that because there are there are there on there like four four of their yeah. stuff there. They don't just call it in. I thought well, I would have to see if anybody heard it. And I think you need to see if anybody heard it. They can check the calendar. The calendar doesn't show up until the opportunity for one. Okay, any other questions for the CIO? Through the chair and CIO. Okay, uh, I have a few here. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm really disappointed in that trillium thing. Uh, I'm just going to make a comment about uh, I, I know the staff does the very best that they can do uh, with their applications. And I know that they've got a lot of experience on grant applications. But you know, the grants that we're most successful with is the ones where we know where the pressure points are and we can lobby our applications politically. And when I tried to lobby this thing politically, I was told, stay away from it. Don't go there. But I've made my comments in the right places anyway in such a manner that in such a manner that I was confident we would get a good hearing. The fact that we didn't get a good hearing or that they say we weren't within the scope bothers me because I know and I trust 100 percent that the staff was within the scope of the of the program that they were applying to. So it's a bit dis disconcerting. I'm just gonna let that pass because it's over. And I think it's the second application to the same program, was it not? But this was a we we reduced our ask considerably on this application, if I recall correctly. Was it the same program? Really, it was not the exact same program. It did go through uh, the, the first one did go through the uh, very trillion fund, but it was a, 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 a different stream. But one of our items of in revising it was to, to make it a little more palatable, palatable and, uh, uh, and cost sharing, which we thought would have been uh, well received. But did it not go through the trillion fund? It did go through the trillion fund. So, but they're the they're the receiver and reviewer, but it, it wasn't necessarily. I don't believe it was the resilient fund in the first. The first stop was the first it, was, it, was, it was labeled a different thing. Okay. Right. All right, because these mechanisms do change, and it's, it's really important to understand the mechanisms, that's for sure. All right, so another another question, if I can, uh, and that concerns the building, uh, the, the block where you're talking about the building, and 100 building permits issued to date, including three new residential units in July. 14 for swimming pools are unbelievable, but I can't put the weather, you can understand it. But next paragraph, over the last two months, approximately 90% of the delinquent or inactive building permits over the last three years have been updated or finalized. Now, what's not being said, and I'm, I don't want to read between the lines, but I'm reading between the lines. Did we have a number of building permits that, that, were inactive. In other words, the building hadn't been started. Oh, uh, there, there certainly are those uh, uh, circumstances, and there were also uh, circumstances where the inspections were not uh, uh, requested, and uh, some follow-up done in that regard. Okay, so they didn't ask for inspections, and they didn't get their inspections at certain points during the process. In, in certain circumstances, that is correct. Okay, now the, the, the nub of my question is this. When we find a situation where a, a permit holder that didn't start his construction and we 
updated by canceling his building permit. I don't know. It doesn't say here that we canceled them, but it says we we updated them or finalized them. Did we get any pushback from people or uh, anything that council should be worried about? You no, know, I, I I would say that it's, uh, nothing substantial has been raised to my level that would be uh, of concern at the stage. It's been in, in, inactive or on the progress aid. Uh, they, they, they would need to sort of uh, reapply or uh, yeah, they are in the So um, I'm sure that they prefer not to pay that $95 renewal fee, but um, they, they didn't proceed with the process. Okay, so do you know if any were actually in that position where they needed to renew? I mean, I'm just curious. I, I do. I, I do believe that there were some. Okay, and they chose not to renew. Or they, or, or, or they did. Or they did. Okay. And that's and, and that's what's meant by up to. Yeah. Okay. They, they, they renew. All right. Um, do we have uh, going to the next item now? The bylaw enforcement officer continues to identify and issue violation notices, and we're <laughs> trying to. Uh, get ourselves ready for uh, various appearances. Uh, do we have any more word from the courts yet? Are they are they giving us court dates? Do we know? Does the clerk have any more well, information? Uh, I think Through the chair, we do not have any specific dates as of yet. We have been told through our sources that they are coming. Okay, all right. And I'm assuming that you're you're in touch with the lady from the counties that sort of is the liaison with the court. With the court. We're in contact um, with the POA person that you are indicating, as well as a couple of the justices. Okay. All right. And so now I'm skipping over to page two. Uh, I'm really interested in this uh, dust suppressant from DENCAP, calcium chloride, it looks like to me, CACL2, uh, giving it to us for free. Um, can somebody give me a little bit of indication of what was happening here? Uh, and it's from DENCAM. Is DENCAM in any way affiliated with Daily? Yeah. For the chair, uh, it is Daily. It is Daily. Yeah, Daily. I think they bought them out. They were sold out of um, the the material we're getting from them. They contacted us and asked if they we would be interested in it. I think it was about eight percent. Where typically it's a much higher concentration for what we apply for. So as opposed to just putting water on some of the roads and make it a bit dusty or something, we're applying this eight percent of getting the extra calcium chloride for the road free. Okay, so it was it was product that daily acquired in the acquisition of Dencap. Um, no, it's it's uh, uh, I think uh, that Cam has taken over daily for some time now. <clears throat> the other way around. Okay, daily is taken over daily. Okay, sorry. Um, the material itself was uh, they had a process upset of some sort where uh, one of their tanks had extra water put into it, so it was diluted and therefore they couldn't sell it. Oh, gotcha. So basically, they asked. Us, we'd like it. We said yes, and you've got it here for old so far. Fair, fair um, enough. Thanks very much for that. Uh, Johnstown Range Project delayed. I uh, understand that. We're obviously using the same crews and equipment. Uh, now, the one that really bothers me is on page four of four, and I, I realize I skipped page three. I'll go back. But on page four of four, uh, under fleet, the technician noticed a bulge in the water tank on pumper truck seven, pumper tanker seven, and suspects a broken baffle inside the tank. Um, and I don't know the age of pumper tanker seven, but is there no warranty here? So if I could to the CAO. To, to, to the mayor, uh, maybe mistaken on this one, but I believe that. Uh, Robert Davidson was a 2001. 
on a 21 year rule. Because we don't have many lakes to stand I don't on. Think I don't think there's much more in, in, in that warranty. In there. But here's the issue though the unit will remain in service and repair is scheduled in the next few weeks. Where do we have to take this uh, piece of equipment to get the uh, service done on it? Uh, Mr. I'm not, I'm not sure on what I mean, in the fire chief's hands. Uh, okay, but, but obviously it's something that has to go out of the uh, there, uh, Potentially. Okay. Potentially. I, I, I don't expect that something that can be done on site probably has to be in the cage drop. Okay, and I'll go back if I can find, yes, page three. Um, now, there's a, in the Cardinal Water Plant, there was ab, adverse sodium samples and adverse lead samples. And then we do one, one uh, additional test. It comes back okay. What, uh, can you give me any kind of indication as to what causes these adverse results? And, and I just find it strange that we just have to do one additional and it's okay. We're getting false testing, it seems like. Through the well, part of part of that resampling process is to confirm that you know potentially that there wasn't uh, um, any type of, uh, of lab error. Yes, in, 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 like in that, in, in that regard. Yep. Um, because so you know through through the process, you know there's there's always that potential, and that's that's part of that um, outlining procedure to confirm that. Um, for instance, like the, the sodium, I think was like um, twenty point, let's say twenty point one, and the uh, the, the, the limit is uh, well, the limit of sodium is two. There's two limits. There's a two hundred uh, uh, limit, which is typical, but the twenty limit is for those that have low sodium, uh, low sodium diets. So um, it was like twenty one one, and they, they sampled from that twenty one point. And uh, the, the, the other team will come back to the other. Okay, so it's close. So it's, it, yeah. it, it, it's close that. Uh, so, the example, I think, is every five years through regulation? Um, it's uh, through the term. It's actually, it's it's uh, it's reportable every five years. It's reportable. So if you have an adverse, if you have five years before you hit report another adverse. And the lab actually picks that up pretty much. Yeah, this this one was asked almost exactly five years ago. We had that an adverse burn. So, um, so they're they're just minor errors that can result from either lab error or uh, the way the sample is taken. Well, yeah, potentially. We'll, we'll certainly uh, we certainly uh, uh, do. Uh, Take more testing than than, than the minimum uh, that you have. So right. we'll we'll find that to see if we can determine the, uh, any other potential uh, services. Okay. Uh, so if there are no other questions of the CAO, uh, I'm going to ask. Um, who was it? Councillor Hunter. Myself, I'm myself, I'm the mayor of the council and team, the CAO administration for this presented. Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion is carried. And so now I'm at item number 13 on the agenda, which is council inquiries and notice of motion. And I had Councillor Hunter's name on the agenda to speak, and I have Councillor Cameron before the meeting asking to speak. Councillor Hunter. Well, I think we said most of my say before our before we had the presentation, I would ask uh, Mike to show up here. He didn't think he was going to be able to arise for the discovery, but I guess he made it. Obviously, he made it here to his request. I think I didn't get talking to him down and seeing his down there. And it's really worse than Mike because the ditch is brought me for Mike if you uh, if was left there and went off the road and got a maybe a foot and 14 inch deep, deep ditch is going in the build here go off there and got a five foot down here going down into the ditch and, and uh, had that right at the end of your driveway and then the engineer told him that even when it's 
when he paved the road, they were just going to pave the road straight down to his driveway where he, there where he goes in, and there was going to be no pavement e either way. When you back of the driveway, you back around on, on the on gravel road. The other way, well, anybody drives trucks, and they drive trucks in, in, in travel trailers, should be paved down more than just width of the road, that the road's not going to last no matter what you put there if you're back and track a couple of travel trailers around it all the time coming in and out, the road's going to be broke up. So most places I think even for our clouds they got to turn turn there that we want to pave down a little bit and, and in the ditch there was you know, even the last thing came down when looking at it. I wouldn't want to be turning the cloud to drive down that road cloud there and then we always have it. We've always plowed down down to where Ron Chesty's wind uh, air property area, their roadway. I think that's where we generally stop. So that's beyond Mike's drive. Oh, well, this is over at Hills. Oh, okay. it's over at Hills when we turn to down to where the, where the okay. water's coming. Okay. okay, well, we don't want to rehash the earlier discussion and the uh, I think it's in the hands of staff right now, and I'm content to leave it there. And there are the two issues, but what um, interests, you know, what, what I want to do is try to find a way uh, of keeping council abreast of where we are with these two issues. So we don't meet again until uh, CDC meeting in August, which is the first Monday in August. And, uh, and then the admin finance meeting, or excuse me, CDC is the first Tuesday in August, because of the holiday. So I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Grant, if we can have an update on these two issues, just an email to members of council to let us know how uh, these have been resolved. We realize that there will be change orders involved uh, for both of these, but I think both of these job, uh, this job has a contingency fund. So the contingency fund uh, should I mean, I don't know the amount of contingency, but it should be fairly healthy. And these mm -hmm. should be relatively minor in relation to the contingency fund. So could we get an email update to tell us where we are on these two issues? Through, through, through the mayor again, once we have the direction uh, set, and we will certainly update the council. Okay. All right, uh, that deals with those two. And so then, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just have two inquiries for uh, for staff. Um, I, I'm, I've been getting calls regarding uh, Dundas Street uh, in in front of the old grocery store. Um, do we have do we have anything positive coming out of that? I, I see now that the sidewalk has now been removed, uh, so we have no sidewalk in there. Uh, the barriers have been up for quite some time, which in one way is good, uh, but we're now forcing people out onto, onto Dundas Street, and we have been for, for quite some time. So is, is, can, we, can we find out just what's going on here? Uh, in the, uh, uh, through the mayor, uh, that, that area is barricaded off in the front for, for, for safety reasons. Right. Um, I, would say that there has not been uh, much in the way of uh, progress uh, done by the uh, by the owner slash contractor in, in, in the last uh, uh, week or two. Um, but, um, I will uh, hope to get an update from the building department on uh, on on status and progress. But I don't just get a follow up on 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 that regarding the sidewalk. Did did our people? We moved the sidewalk. So uh, through 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 the mayor, um, the, the the request was made for the uh, uh, sidewalk to be removed for some repairs to that structure. So we we okayed the sidewalk removal. But did we, did we, uh, remove... we, did, we? We did not physically remove that sidewalk. And do we know where the remnants of that sidewalk ended up? I do not have the specifics for where the sidewalk panels end up. Um, I'm, 
I, I would just like to bring it to the attention of, of, of staff that I noticed along the canal bank uh, towards the Conestoga that some new concrete has been dumped there. Now, I don't know if it's from this area. I have no idea. I have no idea who put it there, whether it was our staff or ourselves or someone else. Uh, you just may want to check into that. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. And I'll just move on to my next uh, question. And, and again, it was for staff. I, I, I'm sorry. Sure, no, okay. it. Certainly, go ahead. I can comfortably say that the township did not place new cement on the shoreline. If 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 you would just look into it, to, uh, it, it, it is it is west of uh, Richardson's Point, um, in in that area. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Now to my, to my second question, I received a call from a from a taxpayer. Um, they want to make a donation to the township in the form of a memory bench. Um, and they would like to know just what the procedures are to, to do this. So if staff could just fill me in uh, as to what do I tell this person to do? Does he contact the office? Does he contact Mr. Spencer Does he, or, or Mr. Shaw? Or, or where, where would the next step be for this uh, person? Uh, I believe that the individual may have already contacted uh, the um, facilities manager with respect to that. Was this in the last two days? Um, through the Irish Town family, um, it was um, the last week, and we've already picked up a bench to know the bench, unless it's someone new. Um, well, is it connected to the Legion? Not connected to the Legion, but I don't know if the member that in memory of was a member of the Legion. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess through the, through, through, through the, uh, if, if the if the individual is something different, probably the best place. I will. I, I'll, I'll, I'll verify that. Manager. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly verify I'll that. I'll speak to you after. Very good. Contact. Okay, sure. Sure. That, that'd be, that'd be, <clears throat> that'd be super. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, so just picking up on one point that was raised by Councillor Cannon, um, is it clear understanding with the owner of the building on Dundas Street, the old grocery store, is it a clear understanding that he replaces that sidewalk at his expense? That is, that is clearly understood. Okay. And I just want to indicate that that I too am becoming quite concerned about the the rate of progress on this on this particular um, project. I mean, it, it's really. I I did speak to the building inspector about it today, and I did get an explanation from him, and uh, I mean, I, he's telling me what he's being told. And uh, I, I don't know what other mechanisms that we have to deal with this, but surely we must have within our, within our bylaws, et cetera, we must have some mechanism where we can deal with the tremendous lack of progress here. And I'm just wondering if staff has any suggestions that they can make about this. I mean, I'm not going to solve it here tonight. I know that, but if we're back here in August and there's, there's been no advancement of the project, I, I'd like a report from no advancement by August. I'm, I'm going to be looking for a, a rather robust resolve. I know that there's other parties involved. I hear that from the building inspector. I don't think they have the right to shut us right down in the middle of Main Street in a village for three, six, pretty near three months now. So bad situation. Glad to see something's happening, but. Wait, Mr. Mayor, could you 
elaborate on that? It's been shut down for three months. Well, how long has it been? Certainly, it's been all of July. And it's been, in my opinion, it's been pretty much all of June. Oh, no, it's only been a couple, three weeks. Oh, no, it hasn't. No, 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 no. It's over, it's over that long since we had the issue with the uh, with them putting their materials against the wall, of, against the window of the drugstore. Anyway, uh, you know, it's slow. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, if there are no other council inquiries and notice of motion, I'm going to proceed to item number 14, which is the mayor's report. There's a few things here. So just an update to council. You know that we've been working uh, with uh, daily on the sale of some township property. And I met with them again last week. Uh, they're still very, very interested in in proceeding, and I think we'll find a mechanism to uh, work forward on that. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to have one more meeting with Prismian, and I'm not being able to get that arranged as of yet. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was just quickly, the three mayors did review the agenda for the upcoming tribe municipal meeting, which will be hosted by us on Thursday, July the 28th. Now, Mr. Grant, I understand we're going to host it right here in this room. Is that correct? Right, that, that is correct, Mr. Mayor. So okay. That, so that we have that capability uh, of doing the recordings. Okay. And one of the items on the agenda for the meeting uh, was the item of doctor recruitment. And uh, MPP Clark had attended at County Council meeting uh, at the beginning of the month to talk about doctor recruitment and get the feeling of the, um, I'm, I'm going to say, get the temperature of the uh, County Council with regard to doctor recruitment efforts. So I was asked by the other mayors to invite MPP Clark to the meeting on the 28th, which I did. And uh, unfortunately, his schedule won't permit him to be there, but I just wanted to report that to Council. Uh, the mayor's asked me to reach out, and I did that. The uh, last thing is that the AMO conference is on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, August the 22, 23, 24. We have a council meeting scheduled for August the 22. Uh, Mr. Grant is going to see if there's a mechanism to um, uh, work, uh, come, come up with some kind of a workaround for that date. Now, I understand uh, from the clerk uh, that no other members of council have registered for the AMO conferences. Am I getting that correct? Or will other members of council be there? Of course, as you know, I have responsibilities at the county level and county works my arrangements. So no other members of county of township council can be there, okay? Just want to get that clear. And that's my report. And I'm going to ask if... Um, Deputy Mayor Jason would bring forward the motion to receive the mayor's report. It's not seconded by Council John Hunter. The municipal council receives the mayor's report as printed. Okay, thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And so now I'm at item number uh, 15, which is the question period. We have nobody left, nobody on Zoom. Uh, we have no closed session. And so I'm looking for the confirmatory bylaw, Councillor Cam. Yes, thank you. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that a bylaw to adopt, confer, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be now passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2022-53. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And then the motion to adjourn, Councillor Dill. Moved by myself and second by Councillor Cameron. That this called Councillor Bird now adjourned at 49 p.m. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you.